Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here for our presentation. For our, our caption project, we decided to do a recipe blog called the Recipe Compilers. So to start off, my name is Nahal Ahmed, and I'm a recent graduate from the University of Illinois with the Bachelor's of Science. I made a career switch from pre-med after learning about programming from some of my friends. After the switch, I did get certifications in Linux and business analysis, but for my passion for software development, it stems from seeing how requirements are created and implemented. My name is Josh Chosen. I hold a Bachelor of English from Western Michigan University and a Master of Science in Library and Information Science from the University of Kentucky. I practice librarianship in correctional and educational settings, and I last served as a database curator for Minnesota 211. And um, I'm Dallin. Um, I graduated in 2021 with a Bachelor of Science in Biology from Dixie State University. And I've always enjoyed programming, but I never really had the opportunity to get into it until I until I saw this program. And so I switched from being a medical coder to, to doing this when I, when I found it. So why a recipe blog, you might ask. Uh, we decided to do a recipe blog as a capstone project to demonstrate the knowledge and skills we learned throughout the bootcamp. Like the blog lets us implement the CRUD operations in the REST API, and it also allows us to implement security and authentication. And this is our and this is our schema for our database. It, everything is kind of centered around the recipes and the recipe card. In the bottom right, we have it going through our through our security there, so that you know people can edit their own recipes, but not other people's. And also, we've got comments and allergies connected to it as well. Now we'll show a demo of the project. So here is the recipe compiler itself. On the home page, we've got some animated photos of some of the recipes available in our database. And users don't have to be logged in to see any of this. You have the option to navigate using the navigation links or some of the helpful links that are built right into the, the home page. Our about page shows a little bit more information about our application, some of the uses for it, and some of the recipes available. And here are the recipes themselves, again, non-logged in users can take a look at all the different recipes we have available. You can choose between a view showing them all, or you can filter down to specific categories of recipes that we have available. And another thing non-logged in users can do is to click on the view recipe detailers to get a little bit more detail on our recipes. There's some information about dietary restrictions here. We have an ingredients list and some instructions on how to make the recipe themselves. And then we have comments that show up here. Now, users who are not logged in must log in to post a comment on a recipe so that when you do hit the comment, it's gonna redirect you to, to a login page. We do use password authentication so that failed passwords do throw up a validation error. And once a user is logged in, they can then post on any recipe they find in here. Just demonstrate this. And this shows up on our screen below. Now note that this recipe was posted by a user called Homer, whereas we're logged in as Dave. And if we were to just navigate to a recipe posted by this user, such as the chili recipe, we'd notice that down below the comments, we have additional buttons to edit or to delete the recipe. Only users who posted an individual recipe are able to either edit or delete a recipe. So for instance, I might choose to, might choose to add a gluten allergy safe filter to this one since none of the ingredients listed have any gluten in them. And it would show up right on the top of our card here. The other functionality that a logged in user can do is to add a recipe. So we can click on this link here and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna add in here a cinnamon raisin bread recipe of, of my own that we make here at home. Meanwhile, I, and to, uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to set all of our dietary restrictions filters. And add some ingredients here and some instructions on making the recipe. Now we do, uh, all of these fields are required except for the dietary restrictions field so that if I try to add without setting the difficulty or category, we do get a validation error. So we can go ahead and set this to a normal level of difficulty and assign it a category of breakfast and add the recipe. And now it appears on our main page. 
we click into the details card, there's all the information we have here. The posted user's name and date is automatically added. And before we have any comments, we get uh, this no comment screen. So we can, we can just add a new comment here. Demonstrate that functionality. And then it does show up this way. I note that as a bread recipe, it's not uh, gluten allergy safe. It uses butter, so it's not vegan. So we can just edit those out. Click the update button, and now our recipe shows up this way. And the last function that only a logged in user can do on their own recipe only is to delete a recipe. So we can hit the delete button. Note that these are read only fields, and we can delete it. And now the posted recipe is gone from our database. So moving on, uh, we use various technologies and languages as we learned throughout the course. And we also implemented a JavaScript animation library called GreenSock to fulfill the new technology requirement. For the back end, we did use Java and Spring Boot. We also did use JUnit testing to test our back end. For the front end, we use React, GreenSock, JavaScript, and Node.js. For our database, it was Hajala Mesh and MySQL, and GitHub was used to share and merge our files. We did have a few difficulties as we made this project. One of the first ones was just uh, was just implementing authentication. That way, uh, we people couldn't edit and delete other people's stuff. That would be that would be very cool. So um, that was our kind of first challenge there. We also had some trouble with Git. Um, we all had used this before. Um, we we're we we're all kind of new at it still, so so we had to we had to work to make sure we didn't lose any data or override anything whenever we did merges and stuff. And of course, learning GreenSock was a bit of a challenge. And well, reading the documentation, we were able to learn a lot. Some of it was just trial and error, and it's good times. We were able to figure everything out and work pretty good. Though we are a new application, we have some future improvements we would like to make. For example, adding features to allow users to add profile pictures and adding a registration feature to add new users to our application. We also would like to add a feature to combine images with the user ID so we can add the flip card feature as you saw on the recipe page, where we would add the images to the recipe cards. And lastly, we would like to implement a search recipe feature so it would be easier for the users to navigate throughout the website. Lastly, any questions? Great job, you guys. I know we had a few people giving you shout outs on your, your UI, that was a, a really fun UI, I agree, it kind of reminded me of a, a, an old school magazine. It was really neat. Um, so I'm curious, um, I'll, I'll start with my, my kind of low hanging fruit, which is I loved your, your logo you came up with. So um, who made our, your, your logo that you had there in the upper right hand corner? Uh, I, I made that in the hall, I made the logo. Very cool, I, I thought that was a nice little touch coming up with your own unique logo for your business. Um, Brian wants to know, were the recipes stored in one of the database tables or many? In, oh, in one database table or many, sorry. The recipe itself was a single table. The um, dietary restrictions information was on a separate table, uh, one to many with a bridge table between. Same for the comments. Awesome, thank you, JJ. Uh, another Brian wants to know, um, what font did you use for the headers? He loved it. Oh, Roboto Slab and Roboto for body text from uh, Google Fonts. Excellent, thank you. Shiloh would like to know, what challenges did you face using GreenSocket? Um, well, I'll take this one. Um, for the, for the GreenSock, the a lot of the forums for it were out of date they um they implemented a lot of new features and changed a lot of things so when we were doing it we kind of had to look had to focus a lot more on just trial and error and documentation to make sure everything worked and just running it like a hundred times to make sure it didn't have any errors yes running it a hundred times i'm sure you ran your app more than a hundred times over the last two weeks huh <laughs> I'm curious, you know, what was your, your greatest accomplishment, either individually or as a team? Uh, I guess I'll start off with that. I think having a single recipe card like the one JJ implemented, where it takes you from like the whole recipe base to the single recipes where it shows you the ingredients, 
I feel like that feature was really nice and makes the UI look very clean. And let's say even, although we wanted to add the image feature, which we probably would do in the future, but overall, I think the UI looked really clean. So everyone agree that was your, your greatest accomplishment, getting that, that single recipe card? I would just sort of say working with React in general, um, we, there was a lot of growth that had to happen uh, for the UI to turn out the way it did. Absolutely. Yeah, and also just uh, learning how to use the animation library, I, th I thought was really, really fun and great. Very cool. So um, do you, looking back on this project two weeks ago, you know, what if anything would you guys do differently, whether it is the approach or the tech? Um, how do you think you might have adjusted any of the um, efforts you made here? I would have liked to have wireframed the UI before we came up with the database schema because, um, the schema seemed obvious just based on the type of information being recorded and saved. Uh, but when we got to the UI, I found that it was in a lot of a lot of ways kind of deficient. And I think if I had just I think if I had just pictured the UI elements first, uh, some of that refactoring wouldn't have needed to happen. Uh, I probably would add on to that. I would say organizing our back end, front end, like in a timely manner, would have been easier to work with because we had to go back, change our schema. We had that to go back and change it back in multiple times to make our UI look better. I think that's a common theme, just so you know. You're not alone in that, <laughs> that, that uh, constant kind of refactoring there. Sorry, Dallin, go ahead. I was actually just going to say the same thing. I feel like we could have uh, planned a little better and uh, worked with our UI first because the back end stuff, I feel like we were all pretty, pretty good with and we were able to get done pretty quick, but we had to go back a bunch of times and, and reorganize it based off of changes in the front end. I hear that quite frequently. It's, uh, you know, you start with one plan and end up somewhere else and things change and therefore your, your backend ends up changing. But regardless, you guys, you built an incredible application. You should be really, really proud of the um, outcomes that you got to. And I know that it's, um, it's a lot of work in this short period of time. So congratulations. You guys did an excellent job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.